Hey folks, this is Florence. Um, I just wanted to toss up a time-lapse video of my painting work for uh, this week's uh, Sky Arts, my Portrait Artist of the Week uh, broadcast. Uh, I painted this, I believe, either uh, Monday or Tuesday night. Um, it took me about six and a half hours and I, I am working with a oil on canvas 9 by 12 um, and uh, I basically just sketched out both um, Russell and his dog or one of his three dogs uh, based on some of the video footage that uh, had been broadcast so those are just screen caps of um, of uh, both of them as they appeared on screen briefly um, and uh, so I decided I would stream this on my Twitch channel, which is uh, twitch.tv slash fccreative. And um, yeah, so you're going to see some um, some follower uh, stuff on, on screen that uh, I, I, I forgot to prevent from showing up. Um, and uh, that's also why there's kind of an odd crop on the right hand side because I also t forgot to turn off the uh, public chat uh, showing from showing up on screen. Uh, but here you can see I'm just uh, roughing things in. I was trying to avoid overworking this because I knew if I was going to be painting over it, it would probably not even show up. But I did want to get all the landmarks about right. And I guess I was, at this point, having a little bit of trouble getting the uh, resemblance quite, quite right. I know that I wanted, I, I was okay with kind of working things out a little bit um, in the painting stage. Uh, but at this point, uh, once I had that mostly worked out, I decided I would just uh, coat it with a acrylic matte medium, let it dry and then allow um, basically a little bit of time for it to dry and then um, and then begin with oil paint mainly because um, this particular board can be a bit thirsty uh, if you don't seal it off and uh, if, if you don't seal, seal it off basically it'll just keep on drawing in oil paint and then just completely suck out um, any sort of vibrancy from your paint. Um, so I did choose to be quite restrained with my palette. I don't have a lot of, of pigments on hand. Um, I believe I used a cad blue. Uh, there was a lizard and crimson. There was Naples yellow as well as a cad yellow bright hue. Uh, I also had raw umber and a burnt sienna and also titanium white. And um, that was all put onto a uh, gray palette paper pad. Um, so here I'm actually just um, blocking in some shadows with some thin washes. Uh, I'm using a eco-specific uh, turpentine. I don't have the name with me right now, but I will put it in the description below. Um, and uh, it doesn't really have a strong scent and... Um, doesn't really make my my skin react too much so i like i like using it um over and above mineral spirits but of course as with any sort of of oil solvent uh you still want to be careful um so here i'm actually just uh giving the shadows a bit of a push and pull and then i started blocking in the shirt um, and uh, as a group on, on stream, we kind of recognize the fact that the shirt is definitely, it definitely started out a lot brighter than um, the, the reference chose to be. So eventually you'll see that I, I do kind of dull it down a bit. Uh, I did add some cerulean blue. I also um, kind of uh, brought back in some of the raw umber to kind of desaturate it a little bit. And uh, basically here I'm trying to, 
I'm trying to form some distance between the dog and uh, and the rest of the shirt. I was very conscious of the fact that the tone, uh, the tonal values of the dog are very similar to the tonal values of of the shirt, and uh, this would continue to pose an issue well into like the later ends of the later stages of of the painting. Uh, I also started working in some reddish tones for both the dog and uh, and Russell's ears because um, it, it's not very strong, but um, I really like the idea of make, giving a bit of life to the ears um, since they tend to show redness quite a bit in real life. Uh, and then I, I started blocking in some of the lighter colors for the skin. And it's at this point that I have like a mix of Naples yellow, um, cad yellow hue, alizarin hue, uh, yeah, alizarin crimson hue, and a little bit of raw umber. And uh, there was a lot of me kind of working out um, the hues in between. Um because at this point he definitely looks very, very chalky. And you can kind of see that I'm, I'm working in some redness for the, um, for the lips. And then also kind of working in uh, the shadows again and adding some uh, some cold value, uh, some cold colors back in uh, for his stubble, um, and then also like the the, the contour of his jaw. Um, the shape of the top of his head is also kind of critical to, to making it work for him as well because um, his forehead kind of uh, curves out a bit and then um, and then uh, it, it's really quite distinctive and kind of shows off the contour of his ears as well. Um, and in doing so, I basically figured this is a good time to start working in the background. I didn't really want to just go with a plain white background, so adding a bit more drama um, is what I chose to do. Um, since his skin is so warm and the shirt is so cold, I just decided to go kind of neutral. But definitely there's a lot more shadow here than in the original reference. From here on in, uh, basically I am attempting to wor work in more detail. Um, particularly in the eyes. And, uh keep redefining that hairline and uh, the, the shape at the back of his head. Um, I added in more highlights for the for the skin and then also started kind of feathering that down with a bristle brush. And then also kind of uh, added a bit more gray to the side of his hair. And then also uh, adding more highlight to his skin to kind of set off uh, set off uh, the darkness of the dog later on. At some point, uh, the palette got just super muddy, so I just decided to redo all of my. Uh, my paint squeezes and just remix things as necessary. And then I started on the dog. I started off really quite dark and then started wiping things away. Um, I'm really not familiar with painting this sort of dog, so I really had to rely upon just painting forms as I saw them. Um, You can see that I'm I'm kind of uh, adding a lot of the more the lighter diffuse color in at this point, and and just trying to uh, make sure I don't get overwhelmed with the shadows. And 
and then I started adding highlights for for the nose and the folds around to the nose. This is the point where um, a lot more negotiation between the details in the dog and Russell himself um, came into play. Um, I did want more or less equal hierarchy between them. And I think at the time I also wasn't super convinced that the expression was quite quite right. There was a lot of correction overall. But by this stage I started to try to make the shirt a little bit more um, uh, a little bit more refined and start smoothing down uh, a lot of the transitions in highlight and diffuse color on the skin as well as add more shading behind the dog and uh, as well as on the dog to give it more um, more volume and to kind of make him pop a little bit ultimately for the hand uh, I'm not super happy with what I ended up with but I probably I probably will revisit it at some point to just glaze in some more shadows it's just that it's a very awkward uh, portion of the support and um, basically I kept on running my own wrist up against the bottom of my desk and um, yeah, I, I figured I would handle it at a, at a later date. I did add back in some more contrast in the hair. And refined the edges a little bit more. And there we have it. Um, that's a... That's uh, how it turned out. And um, yeah, thanks for following along. And I guess I'll catch you with, with the next one. See you later.